Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is Miss Brienne, and welcome to another exciting summer virtual program here at the West Hampton Free Library. Now, as you know, we are currently in the midst of our summer reading program, and it's heading towards the end of July. And we always have a particular theme for our summer reading program. And this year's theme is, as you already heard many, many times, Tales and Tales. Now, you think, when you think of tales, you think of the obvious animals like dragons and cats and dogs. But certain types of insects may or may not have tails as well. And besides, it would probably also be a nice diversion from, all the, from the usual cat and dog book. But we are going to take insects and we are going to turn them into a very nice sun catcher that you can use to decorate your house with. Doesn't that sound like fun, boys and girls? In any event, before we do that, I am going to be reading a true book about the different types of insects that we have. And when it's summer and when it's warm, we have a lot of bugs and insects. And you're going to learn quite a bit about different types of bugs today. So this is a DK First Facts book and it is titled, obviously, Bugs. So for this book, the author is Penelope Arlen. And the author is the person who writes the words in the story. Uh, there is no, there is no illustrator for this because we're using real life photographs. But the book was designed by Victoria Harvey. And it is published by DK Publishing, which is part of Melbourne, Munich, and Delhi. All right, with that being said, are we ready to begin? No, wait, I made a mistake. It's just published by DK Publishing. But are we ready to begin? Now I'm going to throw a lot of facts at you. So, if you want to study, you can always pause the video in between. But are we ready? All right, here we go. How many legs? Let's see some of you. Bugs? come in all shapes and sizes. But you can often tell which kind it is by, by counting the legs. Count quickly, some bugs are fast. So this bug right here, six. It has six legs, then then say hello, if it has six legs, then say hello to an insect. All insects have six legs. Then we have the no legs, these two guys here. If you come across a creature with no legs, then are, you are probably looking at a worm or a slug. Then we have our spiders. Can you count eight legs? If so, you are looking at a spider or scorpion. They always have eight legs. And then there's this guy, has many. Centipedes have, right here, have lots of legs. They have one pair on each small body segment. And then this guy here, the millipede, too many. One, two, three, Four, five, too many legs to count? That's a millipede. Some have, hold on to your hats, boys and girls, 700 
and 50 legs. How about that? And I'm not going to go over all the facts. Bug babies. All creepy crawlies lay eggs. Some babies are just mini versions of the adults. But the babies of butterflies, ants, bees, wasps, beetles, and flies look very different than their parents. So if you take a look at like a wasp, they kind of look like this in the beginning. Butterflies kind of look like, start off as baby caterpillars. Take a look. And you can actually see the life cycle of a butterfly. As it says here, caterpillars are amazing bugs. They build themselves a pupa and magically turn themselves into butterflies. How about that? So it starts off as an egg, then it hatches into a caterpillar. After a while, it forms a pupa. Then it morphs into a butterfly and arises from the pupa. All right, here we go. Beetles. Beetles are insects. Insects all have six legs, two pairs of wings, and three body parts. There are lots of different beetles. Some are spotted, some have stripes, and some even have horns. You know, did you know a ladybug is a type of beetle? I didn't. But look at all those different types of beetles. Some look creepier than others, right? And like I said, if you want to study pages more, you can always pause in between, in between reading, okay? But here, here we go. Ant armies. There are many different types of ant. They all live in groups when they work, where they work together to find food and take care of their young. So right here we have the driver ant. We have leaf cutter ants. They love eating leaves. Weaver ants right here. And then the honey pot ants which some of them, they use their tummies to store food. All right, nature's little helpers. Creepy crawlies may be small, but they are very important to our planet. Here are some jobs that they, that they do that we couldn't do ourselves. For example, pest control. Aphids eat the plants that we like to eat. So we put ladybugs on the plants to eat the aphids. So these little bugs here, they like to chew on plants. But if you want to get rid of them without hurting the plant itself, put some ladybugs on it. Then we got let's recycle. If these bugs didn't eat rotten leaves, dead animals, and poop, our world would be very, very messy. For example, earthworms bury into the soil, making it healthy for plants. So they move that dirt around and make sure all the nutrients get distributed. Millipedes eat leaves and turn them into soil again. Then over here, Baby flies, called maggots, eat dead animals. And then finally, dung beetles remove lots of poop by eating it. You didn't know that, huh? Some bugs make good recyclers, huh, boys and girls?
Well, shall we move on? Buzzing bees. What do you know about bees? They buzz a lot and they sting, but they're actually smart and very busy. So over here, this big bee that you see over here, that's the queen bee. And the queen bee is the ruler of the hive. And all these bees around her are called, called the worker bees. Now, honeybees live in big groups with one queen. Lots of babies and hundreds of workers. Do you know the majority, all of the worker bees, they're, they're born girls? Pretty much all worker bees are girls. But only the queen bee can have babies. Now, bees collect nectar from flowers and turn it into honey. They feed the honey to their babies. We like to eat it too. Ouch! A bee stings if it is upset or being attacked. A sting hurts. Who's ever gotten stung by a bee? It hurts a lot. I wouldn't recommend it, boys and girls. Bee dance. When a honeybee finds flowers, it does a dance to show other bees where to find it. Good. Good, huh, boys and girls? All right, let's see what else we can learn about. Spiders. All spiders have eight legs, and some have eight eyes. How about that, boys and girls? Eight pair, eight eyes? Wow, that's a lot of eyes. Lots of people are scared of spiders, but very few are poisonous to us. So, the tarantulas are the, are the giants of the spider world. Some are so big as this, some are as big as this page. Then we got a black widow spider, a huntsman spider right over here. A ha the common house spider that you may see in your house sometimes. We got an orb spider right here. And then we have our spider's web. All spiders make silk in their body, which they use to weave webs. And they use those webs to trap insects for them to eat. Then we got flies. Flies are everywhere, even in our homes. Most people don't like flies, but sometimes they're quite useful. So you see the eye of the fly here? A fly's eyes are huge compared to its body. Flies can see much better than we can, and they are very fast. That's why they are difficult to swat. And over here we have maggots. Flies lay their eggs on rotten meat. The eggs hatch into maggots, which eat it. They like to eat nasty garbage. Then the house fly has sticky feet. It can walk up walls and even upside down, across ceilings. It rubs its feet to keep them sticky. We have a tetsy fly here and a mosquito. We all like mosquitoes. Some flies, such as the mosquito and tetsy fly, love to drink blood. We don't have to worry about this fly. They live in Africa. They pierce your skin, drink, and leave you with an itchy bump. Not good. I'm hungry. Creepy crawlies eat lots of different kinds of food. Some are vegetarians eating only plants and some eat meat. We got a meat eater like a dragonfly. 
but also dragonflies are harmless. But one animal that's not harm that's not harmless but can can be deadly is the scorpion. We don't have many scorpions here, boys and girls. They usually live down south in places like Arizona and Texas. In fact, the only time I've ever seen a scorpion was when somebody had one as a pet. But, in any event, the scorpion hunts at night. When it finds its prey, it stings with its powerful tail and injects it with poison. Not good. Like I said, there's not, there's not many scorpions here, boys and girls. They, like I said, they usually live down south, mostly in the desert. Now, sipping nectar. When caterpillars become butterflies, they sip flower nectar through their straw-like tongues. And lots of bugs are vegetarians, like this caterpillar. He munches through leaves with his strong jaws. So it's funny, caterpillars eat leaves, and then when they become butterflies, they eat nectar. Interesting, huh? Hide and seek. Look carefully at these pages. Can you find any bugs? Creepy crawlies make a delicious meal for other animals, so many have sneaky ways to hide. Like this one. Is this an insect on this tree? Yes, it is a looper moth. It looks like it's the same color as this tree, which makes it easier for them to hide themselves. Then this Katie did looks exactly like a leaf. It even has leafy stripes. If you didn't see this up close, would you think that was a leaf? Yeah. Then over here, a pile of dead leaves? Actually, there is a crafty cryptic, mo cryptic moth on top. And then over here, this is not bird poop. It's a king swallowtail caterpillar. What? What a disguise, huh? Then over here, don't get too close to smell this flower. There's a crab spider on it. Then over here, nobody wants to eat prickly thorns, so these tree hopper bugs are nice and safe. All right, next page. Small, but deadly. They may be small, but some bugs are very dangerous. Not just to each other, but to us too. Like mosquitoes? So we have mosquitoes, spiders, and locusts. Now locusts don't bite you. The problem with locusts is that they swarm in thousands and they wind up eating all the plants they can find. And they can eat all, all the plants on a farm in just a few hours. Scary, huh? All right, record holders. There are more bugs on Earth than any other creature. For every person alive, there are hundreds of millions of bugs. So we got some good records here. First off, the biggest spider. The Goliath bird-eating spider is, is as big as a dinner plate. Look at how big that is. The biggest butterfly. The Queen Alexandra bird wing stretches up to 12 inches, one whole foot. Heaviest insect. The gi this giant weather cricket is three times heavier than a mouse. Wow. The loudest insect. The African cicada can be as loud as a rock concert. You don't want to go near that, huh? Most legs. 
Some millipedes have as many as 750 legs. How about that? Then the longest insect. Some stick insects are 12 inches long. Again, one whole foot. The most poisonous insect. The harvester ant is very poisonous. One sting could kill a rat. And then the fastest insect. The Australian tiger beetle can run up to five miles per hour. Cool, huh? So special features of this book include a glossary of different types of insects as well as an, as an index on where to find certain insects. But in any event, that is all, we, that is all about bugs. Now, take a minute or two in order to figure out what's about one fact that you learned about any of the types of bugs that we read about today. Well, in any event, I hope you learned a lot about bugs. I certainly did, huh? But, now that our book has been read, it is time for our activity. Now, today we are going to be making sun catchers out of plastic, a black, a black glue mixture, and sh permanent Sharpie markers. Now I'm going to go over step by step on how to create the sun catcher. And when you're done, you may have something that looks like this. Now this, I have, I've decided to do a butterfly, but you can do a, do a sun catcher of any bug you would like. It is okay, this is your sun catcher. So, are you ready to learn how to do, make the sun catcher? Now, when you register, before I begin, I'm just gonna let you know some facts. The idea for this sun catcher was from the website The Printables Fairy. And the template I'm using for my Black Loose Sun Catcher is from the website Tim's Printables. So if you're interested in this program idea as well as similar ideas, or if you're interested in the template I have as well as similar templates, please click on the web links in the video description. Now, when you registered, you should have received a kit. And the kit should have contained a thin plastic sheet and a black glue mixture. Now if you didn't get the kit in time, you can make your own black glue mixture. All you need is half a bottle of glue and some black acrylic paint. You take your glue, you, your glue bottle, open it up, pour the acrylic paint into it until it becomes black, and then shake it up to mix it. Now the temp, you also should have sh permanent Sharpie mark, it, you should have some permanent Sharpie markers in any colors that you like. And you should also have a template. Now I'm using a template of a butterfly. But you can print out any template of any bug that you would like for this project. With that being said, are we ready to begin? All right, I'm just going to zoom this in just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Sorry about that. There we go. All right. Oh, you should also have, boys and girls, some scotch tape and a pair of scissors. All right, are we ready to begin? All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is take your plastic sheet and you are going to tape it to your template.
like so. So you're just going to tape it down to your template so it stays in place. Give you a minute to do that. Alright, once you have your template taped, you're going to take your black glue mixture and as best you can, you're going to trace it over the black outlines of your t that you see in your template. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. I know for a fact that mine certainly wasn't perfect. But you're going to do as carefully as you can trace over the black outlines of your template. And you just keep going with it. And patience is the key for this, boys and girls. Like I said, it's gonna, it is a kind of a long process depending on how complex your template is. But take your time. And you just slowly go over each line. See how I'm doing that, boys and girls? And I may have poured a little too much over there. That's okay. It happens. Just keep going until everything is covered. And like I said, you can get simpler templates to practice on. It doesn't have to be this complex. Whatever you feel comfortable do using. In fact, uh, the Printables Fairy, there may be templates on the website for you to try out. But in any event, you just keep going. And just make sure you get as much of the black out the black outlines as you can. And you may not be able to, some of them may dis, some of the markings may disappear, but that's okay. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. But there we go. 
So once every once it's covered, you may have to you're gonna have to wait a while for the glue to dry before you do anything else. And this may even take as long as 24 hours or one day, which is fine. You can always go back to it. But we don't have to wait that long because I had already made one in advance to show you. So this is a fully dried butterfly template. So I'll give you a few minutes to finish up your templates. And then you can pause this video and spend some time doing some activities you like. And then check on it occasionally to see if the black glue is dry. So once it's dry, you're going to take your scissors and you are going to remove the template. from the plastic, like so. So now we have our butterfly template. Then, once you've done that, you're going to take your markers and then you're gonna color in the front of your template in any color you like. It's the wrong color. Start here. And if you're on this step, boys and girls, you can color along with me. And you just color in your temp, your, your sun catcher. And just keep going till all the spots have been colored in. And take your time with this step, boys and girls. Just slowly keep coloring. And like I said, you can use any colors you like. Now I'm not just going to use one color, I'm going to switch to another color in a minute. So I'm now going to switch to another color. So I'll switch to yellow. Let's color in these little spots here. It 
See how it's popping now? It's looking nice, huh, boys and girls? Now I'm just going to finish with a light green. So that's one side of your sun catcher colored. Now I would wait a few hours for the marker to completely dry. And just make sure the ink stays on the plastic. But I already pre-made one on one side and it's completely dry. So once it's completely dry, what you do is you turn it around, then you're going to take the same color markers and color it on the other side. This leaves a more intense color for your sun catcher. So I'm just going to do the same thing that I did on the first side. And it makes it look a lot more vivid. So I'm starting with the teal again. Just keep going. And as you can see, it looks a lot brighter and more vivid, doesn't don't you think, boys and girls? going to keep using the one color. Now I'll switch to another color for the other spots. And you just keep going. So now that the teal is done, I'm going to go over the other spots with the light green. Like so. And then the yellow. Just keep going. Finally, the dark green. There we go. And that is your sun catcher. So I'll give you a minute to catch up if you're on that step. Then finally, cut the excess plastic off your sun catcher.
Now, it's best that you leave some plastic around it, otherwise the black glue will peel right off. And you may need a grown-up to help you do this because so despite the fact that it's so thin, this plastic is very hard to cut. So you're just going to cut around the edges. But like I said, leave some plastic around it so the black glue has something to stick on. Just keep going like so. There we go. Just cut a little bit of this excess off. All right, and that is your sun catcher. Now, you can either tape it to your window or if you want and if you have the materials you can punch a hole in the plastic and hook up a suction cup and stick it to your window that way but in any event this is your how to make a black glue sun catcher i certainly hope you had fun i have definitely had fun making these with you boys and girls but please check out other submarine programs that myself and the other children's librarians here have to offer at the west hampton free library until then, this is Miss Brianne saying take good care of yourselves, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next program.